Well, hey there, folks, and welcome to another edition of the BRO Reloading Bench. Uh, welcome. If you guys haven't uh, haven't visited this channel before, my name is Wade Rush. I host the Bubba Roundtree Outdoors channel. We do all kinds of stuff here, uh, from deer hunting, fishing, shooting, reloading, all kinds of fun stuff. It is fun to be an American. Anyway, one of the biggest enigmas that I have dealt with here over the last few years is trying to figure out a multi-ball round. Uh, well, we're talking about like pumpkin ball, and it's known as pumpkin ball, round ball. Anyway, it's a uh, it's big caliber, large caliber ball, ranging from uh, 70 cal down to 50 caliber. Then you start getting into uh, normal what we call normal size buckshot type uh, rounds but today we're dealing with the 60 caliber ball you can get a fine mold from Marty's molds to mold up these 60 cal ball right here I do not have one yet this is out of the Lee mold I did have a Lee 60 caliber 2 uh, cavity ball mold and I molded up a bunch of these things anyway it has taken a long time to try to get this figured out and I think we're finally on the right track y'all stand by okay Wade we thought you were the buckshot loading guru what is uh, what is the enigma about the multi ball round ball well as best I can explain what the enigma would be of, of big caliber ball sizes and I'm talking uh, 50 50 cal and up to 70 cal which is about as big as you can go in a 12 gauge you're going bore size you're going 72 cal and that is with just a cylinder bore choke or no choke at all in the uh, in the shotgun at 72 cal I haven't loaded anything bigger than 70 cal ball but when you get up that size 68 69 70 cal ball we got one projectile in the round when you get small enough in the 50 caliber uh, 53 cal ball 575 cal ball 60 cal ball 64 cal ball you can get multiple projectiles in one round the enigma example we're shooting number one buckshot out of an extended range load we've got 18 pellets in a three inch magnum round we're shooting at a 28 inch wide target at 50 meters we've got 18 pellets going down range and it and at a range of 50 meters getting all of those pellets inside of a 17 or 18 inch circle is considered ideal because you've got 18 pellets spread out from side to side and in all other pellets you got pellets all across the center of the pattern now the enigma with a round ball we only have two projectiles in there and you spread your two projectiles out 12 to 14 inches at 50 meters that ain't that ain't worth a cuss so now what we've got to do now is tighten that stuff up get those multiple projectiles in this case two or sometimes three and get them right on top of each other at 50 meters ideally because you're going to be aiming it like a rifle anyway and now multiple projectiles does increase your hit probability but we still want those multi ball rounds the those ball to be real close to one another even out to 50 meters I think I have come up with something that is going to work and work well for you guys all right the uh, the RW123 red wide from precision is one of the toughest wads we have ever tested here on this channel or that I have ever used or have ever fired and I have fired a lot of them the uh, precision is not a sponsor they don't send me anything for free or anything like that the uh, the RW123 wide is outstanding it is the best performer in this load the white lightning wide from ballistic products did good but it came in second behind the RW123 the uh, the precision wide is thicker and that 60 cal ball really fits in there perfect 
in that wad. There's a little wiggle room in the uh, white lightning wad. The white lightning wad is one of my favorite buckshot wads. And it did, you'll see in the video, it performed well with these multi-ball rounds. But it, uh, in most cases, it came in second to the, uh, to the RW-123. All right, enough talking about that. Let's put, uh, let's put the first round together that we finally, a round I finally put together that worked consistently whenever we would shoot it over and over. Getting one to work good ain't worth a toot if, if two, three, and four don't work good. And then number five may show some promise and then, you know, six, seven, eight don't perform good. Here, all of these have consistently performed well. That's what's impressive, and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys right now. All right. The first round that did so well. Let me go ahead and get the, the Hornady lock and load set up here to throw me three, 33 grains of IMR blue. Don't have a camera set up on it today, guys. Most all of y'all have seen that multiple times. I can get boring sitting here watching the machine. So uh, we're dispensing 33 grains of IMR blue. I hope you can still find some of these hulls have been almost impossible to find ballistic products sells out of them almost as soon as they get them then it gets harder and harder to find them anywhere but a few a month or six weeks ago they had some some new primed Chidite hulls in stock I was able to pick up a few bags of these so we got 33 grains of IMR blue coming off the machine here. All right. The Precision RW123. I just cut it short. It's got a lot more letters and all that in front of it. But basically RW I'm sure it stands for red wide 1 2 12 gauge three inch one two three I'm assuming that's how they coded or how they named this wide RW that for me it's easy for me to remember red wide 12 gauge three inch from precision that's what this is okay I love how you can see through these clear holes now this is a 20 gauge FC 20 20 gauge fiber cushion wide right here ballistic products has plenty of these if if they have some in stock now half inch we need to push this down into the base of this wide now this isn't see this this isn't a cinch I can push it in there about that far easily with my hand then we're gonna have to get something it's just an old marker that I use a lot and press it down into the base of this wide. There, it stopped. Feel it when it stops. We're trying to get the ball height right. We need that top ball right there even, as even with the top of this wide as we can get it. Now, 260 cal ball. Not treated, anything else. You can't, I'm gonna be powder coating a bunch of these. I made up a bunch of them today. Why powder coat it? Why treat them at all? Do you have to? No. The powder coating puts a jacket on it, puts a real smooth, nice jacket on all of the ball. Some of these will have anomalies on them. Uh, a lot of these spheres, some these two almost are perfect, but several of them will have little small anomalies on them and the jacket kind of takes that out. It really smooths it out. You can treat them with alox and graphite. Yes, yes you can. If you're going to be loading these in a 20 gauge, then you're only you're not going to be able to put these in a wide. They would have to go directly in the uh, in a round for 20 gauge. The, about the closest thing you could do would be Mylar Rapid. That is for a different video. Two 60 cal ball. Now to get efficiently to get the the ballistic products original buffer in here on this, we've used both the Precision spherical buffer from Precision and we've used ballistic products original with equal equal results they you can't tell one from the other they both work equally well we've shot a few without the buffer they don't tend 
to hold as tight together without the buffer. My, my guess is the ball are deforming more in the rounds where we do not put buffer in even around these big ball rounds. So I've got one ball dropped in here. I'll get just a little bit, scoop up just a little bit of Ballistic Products Original and sprinkle it in here and shake the ball around until you see it is just barely covered. Okay, now we'll drop the other ball in on top of it. You see what I'm talking about? It's just about perfectly level with the top of this RW123 wide. Now, we sprinkle a little bit more buffer in there and we just keep shaking it around. The ball doesn't fit in there tight. It doesn't fit in there tight at all. That's why we're putting the buffer in. Keep shaking it around. See, the buffer keeps selling in. And when all the buffer that's going to go in there, it settles right there. And we have a buffered two ball round. I use clear overshot card. Bingo card works equally well. But right now up under the bench, I've got the clear segmented overshot cards from uh, Ballistic Products. Precision has them as, as well. If Ballistic Products doesn't have it in stock, Precision might have it. Push the card right down on top of the wide. Okay. The crimp tool I have in here is the Gipe. Yes, the Gipe finishing tool, BN3, is the one I have in my machine. Uh, Wade, you mean to tell me you can roll crimp with that thing? You better believe it, boys. Watch this. Take a little petroleum jelly and make sure I had just put this bit back in there. I figured y'all might be able to see this a lot better coming from this angle than me trying to set up extra stuff. Clamp it in the hull of ice. Yeah, that's the finishing tool for the crimp finisher. Look at what a job. Not only does it do an excellent job roll crimping your round, look at the taper. It puts a beautiful taper on the end of that roll crimped round so that it feeds really efficiently and effectively in your auto loaders and your pump guns. Yeah, and there's your round. 33 IMR blue, RW123 red wide, a one half inch 20 gauge fiber cushion wide pressed into the bottom, two 60 cal ball, Anyway, not only does it look good, let me take you to the range and show you how this performed. Okay, folks, I finally got, we got two 60 cal ball in here. And you see that's the RW123 red wide from Precision. Now, God, these things are tough. They're some of the toughest wides, some of the toughest wides I've ever shot. And uh, we've got these two 60 cal ball weigh 1.5 ounces, folks. And we're pushing this whole setup here with 33 grains of IMR blue. And we've got it covered in precision spherical buffer around here. I've got, let me see, what have I got for a cushion? I got half inch, 20 gauge paper wide pressed in the bottom of this RW123 to get the ball at the right height in these holes to roll crump them with a clear over segmented overshot card. And we continue to be at 55 yards or 50 meters dove shoot going on in the field right here next to the farm. All right, I can make that work. There we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shoot a two-shot group with these 260 cal ball. Boy, that's got some punch. <laughs> Ah, uh, six two eight. That ain't right. Well, I don't sure, know what, I didn't sure see what the first one was. That really makes me want to shoot. The first one was is is that? Look at that, boys. I'll have to. I'll uh, y'all will see it before I did. But all four balls are right here in in the size of my hand at fifty five yards or fifty meters. 
I think we, I think we found a winner right there. Yeah. Look at that hammer. Thanks. All 460 cal ball are right there in the size of my hand. See, that's what the people want me to take a deer with multi-ball multi rounds as well. Well, I think you got You can right. shoot that one with confidence right there. Yeah, I was impressed too. We, uh, like I said, I had uh, tried several different configurations for you guys because components are hard to find, almost impossible to find at times. So, um, anyway, one of the next great performers that we had is the... Uh, was out of a brand new federal brand new federal primed hull I got mine from ballistic products back in February or March right before this crunch started happening ballistic products ran out of some of the regular stuff that I bought these were a good bit more expensive but I picked up several hundred of the federal primed just because they were out of everything else I'm glad I picked them up now but uh, I'll tell you what also will work if you have a brand or if you had a once fired federal premium now okay let me rewind a little bit but was kind of get a little off topic here we can't video everything we do if we did I would be videoing constantly but we try a lot of things off camera because we just got to run down there do it fast shoot through a session without setting up it takes 45 minutes just to set up yes 45 minutes just to set up in a shooting session that may only take 45 minutes so we can't video everything once fired three inch magnum federal premium hulls loaded in this same configuration you won't have to roll crimp it you can star crimp it if you wanted to well we roll crimp these because they're brand new yeah could i star crimp them i could but i roll crimp them because i like being able to see what is in the round and roll crimping is cool and really looks pretty anyway we uh the next few shots that we uh, shot were out of the new federal hull, and the um, the Chidite with the 33 grains of IMR blue was pushing these two ball around a thousand foot per second or just over. Okay, that's a, a little bit light. It's only an ounce and a half of lead payload weight. Okay, so we could push it a little bit harder. Federal has got more room in the hull than the Chidite hull does. Just a little bit more, but more. has more room. And so in this, and they're also primed with the Federal 209A, which is almost a magnum strength primer. Right. So we're using 34 grains of IMR blue. 34 grains of blue dot work equally well. Same with the previous 33 grains of IMR blue in the previous round with the Chidite. 33 grains of blue dot work equally well. You're just not going to be pushing it as fast. It's going to be just a hair slower than the IMR blue virtually every time. New primed federal hull. We're looking for 34 grains of IMR blue in this round. We also tried the ballistic products, white lightning in this configuration also. It did well. RW123 red wide. Fiber cushion, half inch 20 gauge. Fiber cushion wide, half inch. Two sixty cow ball. When we get down to the range, I had forgotten to mention to tell you guys that I had two rounds. One round had original buffer in it. One round had the um, the precision buffer 
in it. Okay? Original and precision buffer. Clear overshot card. See that pretty taper? That is a beautiful round. Not only does it look good, let's go down to the range and show you how it performed. Well, folks, I got pretty excited the other day. Well, you know, we've been working a long time on trying to get some consistency out of multi-ball rounds. And we got what looked like is going to be a dang good performer. Um, Y'all should have already seen that shot here before we get to this is a different day. Later date, we've got some other ones loaded up that we're checking. I've got a brand new Federal primed hull from ballistic products that you may never see again. We've got 34 grains of IMR blue in this one. We have the RW123 red wide from Precision with a half inch fiber 20 gauge nitro card or with a half, in, half inch fiber cushion wide pressed into the bottom of the RW123 wide to get the correct height uh, for the ball. And we did cover this in original buffer and roll crimped it with a clear segmented overshot card. We are at 50 meters or 55 yards. We're going to shoot a two shot group of this. Then we're going to shoot the exact same data using the ballistic products white lightning wide and, and see how, uh, what kind of grouping we get with the 260 cal ball, which is one and a half ounces of lead payload weight. And folks, we got the buck kicker choke installed standard full buck kicker choke which is 695 constriction if you gotta adjust that that bow of that thing again hoss you can go ahead and do oh, it but, but just aim dead center 1126 and 1151 Well, you, you folks will have already seen the configuration of how to hit, but anyway, that doesn't matter. We are totally tickled with that setup. Look at that. And that's a, that's a different hole, and uh, same wide. I'm, I'm curious of how the ballistic products wide, the white lightning wide will do. And so uh, let's try that one with the same federal, brand new federal hole with the white lightning wide and see what kind of grouping we get with that. Folks, just reiterating, exact same first shot, 34 grains of IMR blue. We've got two 60 cal ball that are three-quarter ounce each in here. Except, only thing, only difference is we have these in the White Lightning, Ballistic Products White Lightning wide with a half-inch 20-gauge fiber cushion wide pressed into the bottom. This one is covered in Ballistic Products Original. Buckshot. Yes, sir. 60 caliber buckshot. 260 cal ball. Oh, the ball. 260 cal ball. But it's buckshot. You said, is it buckshot? Yes, it is. It's 260 cal ball. They weigh three quarters of an ounce apiece. I like the hole right over the board. No. No. No, that's not bad at all. We got two ball, two strikes right here. Now, like I said, y'all will have already seen it before we do, but still, yeah, two separate shots, two ball set, uh, 60 cal ball. That's eight, nine inches from one to the other with all four ball. We've got some once fired holes that I loaded some in, and I think we got uh, trying some with the. Uh, with the same RW123 wide, but in a once fired Remington Express, and we'll see how that holds up. 
Once fired, Remington Express. Y'all finally ran Mr. Bill Kalwas out of halls. I never thought I'd see it happen. I've known Mr. Kalwas for years. Uh, found him on Gun Broker years ago. Been, uh, he was my primary source of 3-inch once fired hulls in both 20 and 12 gauge. Anything you wanted, he had it. Well, as the crunch settled in this year, you guys completely ran him out of hulls. But uh, anyway, once fired, Remington Express, one of my favorite hulls to reload. We're going to install a CCI standard CCI primer. and 28 and a half grains of long shot. Like I said, this is 1.5 ounces of lead payload weight. Each one of these projectiles weighs three quarters of an ounce a piece. My Lee powder measure here is set up to throw 28 and a half grains of long shot. That's one of my favorite buckshot charges for 1.5 to 1.65 um, lead payload weight. All right, and like I said we also tried the uh, the white lightning wad in these, and it worked good. RW one twenty three red, twenty gauge fiber cushion, half inch wad. I'm way ahead before I push it down in the hole, get it started here, and we kind of push it all in here together. Bottom all that out. Wad is just below the crimp. The white lightning wad will come right up to the, the crimp. White lightning uh, wad is just a hair longer than the precision wad. Two sixty cal ball. Like I said, a drop. If I'm using the, the ballistic products buffer, the original, I drop it in there and put a little bit of buffer. I'm just hitting it with my finger, knocking the uh, knocking the buffer around until I see that it has completely covered the ball. And I drop the other one in on top of it and finish covering it in the buffer. Just like that. And maybe y'all can see the 650 okay. And there he is. So when the crimp is that good, you really don't need to put the finishing crimp on it, but you can. You wouldn't think it could get any prettier, but it can. That is awesome. All right, let's go to the range and show you how these did. All right, boys, this is one I was telling you about. Once fired, Remington Express. Hull, we got a CCI primer in here, 28 and a half grains of long shot, because like I said, we got one and a half ounces of total lead payload weight with the 260 cal ball. We've got the Precision RW123 red wide with a half inch uh, 20 gauge fiber cushion wide pressed into the bottom of the RW123 red wide and we have them covered in original buffer and these are just regularly star crimped. Alright, here we go.
and 77. I ain't used to these two shooters. <laughs> huh? I done uncovered my ears. Grandpa, we all Oh, yeah, you yeah, ain't used to them two shooters. Okay. He went to come back up with it, but you had already shot. I, I would have to say I'm happy with that too. Y'all have seen the strikes before I have, but uh, but but any way you look at it, whether that was a strike and that was another one, or it was this and this, didn't make any difference. See, like I said, if you're aiming for the vitals, if that one would have missed him, then any of the other um, 60 caliber ball would have got him. And that one 60 cal ball, heck, 128 caliber buckshot's enough to kill one. Uh, a 60 cal ball, I'll knock him off his feet. All right, that's awesome. Well, there you go, folks. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me this evening, this morning, or late in the middle of the night, whenever you guys get a chance to, to sneak in a video or two. Appreciate you hanging out with me this long, guys. If, uh, if you learned anything and you would like to become a patron and help support this channel, I guarantee you YouTube is not going to allow me to make any money on this video whatsoever because it has firearms related content so if you'd like to go over to patron and sign up to become a patron to help support this channel just head on over the link will be in the description and uh, we've got some really good patrons that are already with us so if you guys would like to help support the channel you can do that for as little as a dollar a month to help support the channel and we appreciate all the support that we can get, guys. So until next time, this is Wade, host of the Bubble Round Tree Outdoors channel. Hope you all enjoyed this episode of the BRO Reloading Bench. We'll be back with a lot more very soon. Bye-bye.